God, what an emotional roller coaster of an episode. Episode 60 of Pokemon Horizons hit me in the feels. Jesus Christ. Okay, listen. Okay, I, I took... I was on, on hiatus for a couple weeks here, okay? And let me just say, these guys have had banger episodes. Like, no joke. Ever, ever since Bradford episode, where she, like, gave this whole, like, backstory on Paldea, it's just been straight banger after banger. Like, I have loved every episode. Since then, which hasn't been a lot, okay? It's only been like four episodes or something like that. But listen, that's a good streak. Especially for this show, that's a good streak. Now, I, I love this episode. So much. Okay, and, and again, you're, you're, I know people are going to be like, Sora son, you have some fucking bias in this fucking show, okay? Well, last episode, you were talking about, you know, Quaxley. You know, Quaxley is your favorite uh, starter from, from Generation 9. And then today, this is the uh, Roy episode. So it's like, you're just getting your favorites. That's why you're liking them. That's not a lie. But, but, it was, it was nice, okay? It was, you have to let me have this. You, you have to let me have this, okay? I was complaining a lot. Before like this part of the saga, okay, you give this to me. Let me actually be happy for once <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. You guys can enjoy it too. I, I don't fucking care. But listen, I love this episode, okay? I really did. I the the whole like Roy for Hogo's first time in the snow and like just experience it because he's lived on an island his whole fucking life, okay? And coming from somebody who lives in a tropical paradise, right? There's no snow here. That I, I, I highly doubt there's ever been snow in this country. So I got to experience snow when I was a child when we went to visit family in the States, right? That was my first time experiencing snow. So I can feel that from like, you know, an island's perspective. Like I, I, I feel my boy Roy, okay? You know, you're excited about this magical, you know, weather phenomenon that's never existed in your you know entire life. So I, I felt him like, I felt the emotions, okay, alongside him. And not only that, okay, they did, listen, I, I, I have complained at nauseam in the past. When they do these fucking, like, like main character separates from their partner Pokemon and, and shit, you know, ensues. But usually, usually, for the most part, they've done this whole, like, one of them's upset at the other and they have to do this whole fucking separation to finally realize how much they care about each other. But that's not what happened here. Okay, and and this this does harken back to it was like early Indigo League stuff, you know, the first the first saga where like Ash and Pikachu like got separated for I don't remember exactly the fucking reason why. There was not a fight though. There was not a fight, but they I think it was the Island of the Giant Pokemon episodes. I might be the one I'm thinking of, but I know there was another one after that, that where this phenomenon occurred, where they they're separated, but it's like they're trying to find each other. It's like something that happened beyond their means um, is the reason why they're separated. And that's what they did here. And it's different because Liko's already had this this issue already in this saga where like she she and Spigatito got into a fit and then Spigatito ditched um, and then like stuff happens and then they finally got back together and stuff like that. Like they did that and I don't like that. I don't like it when they do that because I mean I understand. Friends will sometimes have disagreements and stuff like that, but it's such a, an, a, an overused trope in the show, right? Even in, like, the old saga, to where it kind of lost its luster. Whereas this actually works, because it's not like they're separating because they're angry with each other. In fact, it was a complete accident. But Coco was trying to help Roy because, you know, they're out here, like, collecting firewood and stuff like that. And Point Coco wants to make Roy proud because, you know, Kilowatro is doing his part. And so Point Coco's like, I gotta do my part too. So it, it was that. And then he, like, trips and then he loses the firewood. Um, and then, like, he's like, no, I gotta take this to Roy. You know, I gotta take this because I wanna, you know, do good for him. And, and then he has an accident, which then causes him to fall off a cliff. Uh, and then it's like Roy and Fuecoco try to find each other. Um, and I, 
I will admit, there was like one point in the episode I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Did they really do this shit? Because like, they were in the same spot. Okay, and I, and I, I know that I said I wasn't going to do too much like recapping of what actually happens in the episode. But I have to talk about this point in particular. Because I hate it when they do this type of gag. Where, like, Roy's right here. And Fuecoco's right here. Right? They're in the same vicinity. But the problem is that as soon as, like, like Fuecoco gets there. He's the one supposed to notice Roy first. But, like, a pile of snow falls on him. And then Fuecoco is, like, stuck in the snow. And then Roy turns around. And all he sees is a pile of snow. And then, like... The fucking bear take sh- stuff happens where they fucking roars and they're like, oh crap, I gotta go. Um, but like, every other time the snow fell on Fuecoco, he like shook it off immediately. I'm like, you couldn't do that this time. You could have seen each other way faster. But I think it was just like, they had to throw that trope in there to like really get the emotions going. Because I truly felt Roy. Like his his sadness and his concern and his worry for Fuecoco. And Fuecoco's like, like frustrations and, and, and sadness of not being with Roy. Like it, it it I gotta admit, it hit me. It got me in the feels, right? I was I was okay, I didn't cry, but I was close, okay? I was close and and it all culminated. It was so fucking good because I love the Foy Coco song, okay? The whole well, it's the Japanese one, so it's the whole gator song. I love like like Roy's whole like whole gator song. So, like, him, like, I can't be, like, wallowing in misery while Fue Coco's out there alone and cold. So he starts singing the song, and then, like, Fue Coco, on the other side of the fucking area they're at, like, has that same, like, gutso feeling. He's like, no, I have to sing, and then that's how we'll find each other. And then, like, he starts singing, and then they start moving. And then, like, Fue Coco hears Roy's song. And he's like, oh my god, he's there. So he's like shouting a lot louder. Like he, he's singing louder. And then Roy hears him. And he's like, it's Fue Coco. So then they start like marching closer to where the fucking area, the, the, where the sounds are going. Because they're still singing to each other. And then like, they get to like this one spot. And like, they're like across from each other. Right? Like there's like a, like a, like a little hill. And like, Roy's over here. And then like, Fue Coco's like way down here. And like, they're still singing, and then they see each other, and there's like this, this, this sense of awe, right? They're like, I found you, and then they just run towards each other, and like, oh my god, like, it, it got me, okay? It got me, bro. <laughs> bro, it was too much. It was too much, okay? Like, listen, very few things in the Pokemon anime get to me, okay? Very, especially in a real long time. It's been a real long time since I've had this type of, like, emotional connection to these characters. So, it just feels a lot, okay? Let, I, let me have this one, okay? As a fan of Roy, as a character, and, like, his bond with Fakogo, this episode was for me, okay? This episode was directed towards me. They knew. They knew they were going to get me with this shit. Oh, my God. Like, okay. It was awesome, okay? It was amazing. Um, I was a little surprised that Fidget Bags didn't really get wasn't really important to the plot of the show. They had this whole marketing campaign about Fridgy Backs being in the episode and people were like talking about, oh, Roy's gonna catch a Fridgy Backs, which again, I don't know why people start throwing in these like random captures happening when, like they, they, they need to know that this stuff is set up, okay? It's not just a one-off, okay? They, they, they have plans for this shit. <laughs> but boy, I, lo- I love this episode so much. I, I, I'm really enjoying all these episodes. So because of that, okay? I'm gonna finish recording this one, right? And then I'm gonna watch episode 61, which is Roy's Battle vs. Rhyme, and he's gonna whoop her ass. I mean, that's at least what the preview shows is that they're battling each other, so I'm assuming. Well, no, because it's a three parter, right? It's a three parter for Roy, so something has to happen. Either the battle extends to like two episodes or something happens, but I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. So I am gonna go do that. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I have been your boy, Soros Croxon, and I will see you guys in future videos, streams, shorts, and everything in between.